So, you know, many bands form by maybe two people going, yo, dude, nice misfit shirt. You into the misfits? Yeah, so am I. We should jam. Hey, we should start a band, you know? And then like seven months later, unfortunately, personality differences rear their ugly heads and the band breaks up. Well, you don't have time for that nonsense. So what I'm gonna propose today is what I call the personality questionnaire. You don't do this on the first day of meeting musicians, of course, but when you decide that maybe potentially you got something and maybe you wanna be in a band long term, you definitely need to sit down and say like, yo, and you need to go through these 13 tips that I'm about to offer you. It could mean the difference between wasting tons of time and failing or succeeding. So take them very serious. Let's get started. Tenacity, you guys, is so important. Going the distance, is so important. Why? Because unfortunately, success doesn't come overnight. It could be a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Are the people that you're gonna be working with be able to hang in there? Are they gonna drive the Uber, you know, work at the coffee shop until maybe you guys get your break? Or are they gonna sort of give up and whine and cry and go home and go back to med school after like six months of giving it a shot? Well, you know what? I don't have six months to waste. So I wanna know, do you have the tenacity to do this? Man, I don't wanna like go into this and just find out maybe a, you know, a little time after you're just like, you know, uh, it's not working out. You know, this LA thing isn't working out. I need lifers. So, you know, I know that the music business is supposed to be fun and being a band is supposed to be fun, but you know what? It's more than fun for me. It's, it's a life, it's, it's breath, it's air. It's something I need to succeed at. So I want people that are just as serious as me and are lifers, okay, you guys? So tenacity, you need to ask that question. You know, priority is so very, very important. What are your priorities? You know, is your priority actually rehearsing, getting tighter, going out there, uh, playing, increasing our target audience, increasing our fans, our fan base, getting better gigs, etc. Or is it like, you know, going to the, to the party and, and having a good time and going to the festival and, and all that kind of crap. You know, I mean, you got to live your life. You got to enjoy life. But one of the things that used to tick me off is when I'm in rehearsal and you have people looking at their watches because they're like, uh, oh, 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 we, are we going to do it again? We're going to take the song again. It's like, what do, you, what do you mean? Yeah, where else do you have to go? You know what I mean? It's just like, come on, man. What is your priority? I want people that are into this and want to do this, right? Now, I know I'm a little psycho, <laughs> I'm a masochist, but you almost have to be. You know, the competition is so insane, man. You need people that are, are into this, you know? So priority, what are your priorities? Very important question to ask. You can't stop learning. You always have to get better. And that's why continual improvement is so important. One of the things I couldn't stand is when maybe you got some feedback from somebody professional and they said, you know what, man, your singer needs to sing a little bit more from down here and not from here. It sounds like someone's choking him. He's got to open up a little bit more. And then you try to have a discussion with your singer about this and they get all defensive and ticked off. Or if someone might say, you know what, Bobby, you you start off the songs too fast. You're too revved up in a live performance. You need to kind of relax and slow down, maybe play with the click. Am I going to get defensive about that or am I going to try to improve? Continual improvement is so important. I was so jealous when I heard stories about the early days of Linkin Park. I was told that after shows, they would get on the bus and they would go to the next city and they'd study the performance that they just did. You know, um, unfortunately, most people are just partying and having a good time. You know, these guys were trying to get better and improve all the time. So continual improvement, a very important thing to talk about.
You know what, you guys, we are in the entertainment business and people want to be entertained, you know, and they don't want to be entertained by the guy that looks like uh, the person sitting in the cubicle next to them at their nine to five job. Now, I know there's exceptions to this, right? You might say something about Ed Sheeran, right? It looks like, doesn't look, kind of looks like the anti-pop star, right? And he's like one of the biggest selling artists in the, in the world right now, right? I know I get it. There's always the exceptions. But generally, the way I want to look at this is like we're, we're entertainers. When we go to a stage show, we want to see people dressed in the costumes. We want to see people living the part, acting the part. And, you know, if anything, you know, you want some sort of consistency. I don't want to see a metal band with three guys in black and one guy in Hawaiian shorts and sandals. You know what I mean? So look, if the whole band wants to wear Hawaiian shorts and sandals, cool. But it's got to be consistent, right? So everybody's got to be open to the plan. What is the plan? Long hair, short hair, no hair, you know, what are we going to do? You know, but you have to be open to it because some people really get defensive about this topic. You know, they say things like, I'm a musician, I'm not a model, you know. <laughs> well, you're an entertainer, right? And it's part of the gig, right? So it's something to talk about for sure. Social behavior includes things like, you know, I'm specifically talking about drinking, drugs, partying, etc. right? So, I mean, look, this isn't the business of angels, right? I mean, uh, it would it surprise you if someone, like, smoked some weed, let's just say, for example, and they were in a band, you know, like, surprise, you know, or someone drank alcohol. I'm not advocating for this stuff, you know, but something to open up a discussion. But this is really not even the most important point. The, the most important point is what I'm about to talk about. Yes, 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 we are talking about addiction and I am no specialist and really have no place to talk about this at all. But one thing I can talk about is that I lived beside it. Okay, some of the people that I've worked with are no longer on the face of this earth, dead. Some of my friends, their singers, dead, right? As a result of addiction to drugs and alcohol. Sometimes I think about this stuff and I talk about this stuff in my classes and uh, some of the students would just sit there shaking their heads and I go, what? And they go, wow, you know, we had a problem this with, that, with, that, with our singer. You know, he disappeared. We didn't know how to find him. We go to the rehearsal room. We find out he broke in, sold our gear and was doing like an eight ball in like, you know, Vegas for the last three days. You know, uh, I don't need to do business with people like that. You know, I mean, if you definitely don't want to turn your back because they need your help ultimately, right? So you need to get them help. But am I going to start a business with someone that's already uh, has a problem or I know is going to have a problem? Sorry, no. Okay, I am not. Uh, there's too many musicians in this world. Uh, life is too short. So, you know, just kind of ask yourself what you're getting involved with, you know, and be smart about the decisions that you make. So everybody, what we've been talking about today is we've been talking essentially about, uh, you know, putting together, you know, choosing band members and using what I call a personality questionnaire. So I hope you found these tips very useful. By the way, they're in my book, Business Basics for Musician. It's the second edition. It's actually the orange cover. So I hope you'll check it out and I hope you'll tell a friend. And I also hope that you will check out further video clips. My name is Bobby Borg. I'm just trying to break down music, business, and marketing basics so that they stick. And as I always say, peace. Thanks for watching. So hey everybody, thank you very much for watching that video. Definitely interested to hear what you have to say, so please leave a comment below. Maybe you can tell us uh, about some topics you'd like me to cover in the future, okay? So again, uh, thanks very much you guys and take care.